goodness, look at all of these weeds. Sometimes it's really hard to tell what should stay and what should go. But, uh, lots of these little purple guys. Let's go see if we can figure out who we're dealing with here. The plants we're looking at today are all part of the Lamiaceae family, which is the mint family. This is a big family that has a lot of um, common garden herbs as well as some of our native plants in it. And the three we're looking at today are all introduced species, but they share some common characteristics. Um, they have irregular flowers, which means they're not symmetrical all the way around with two lips. So there's kind of an upper lip and a bottom lip on their flowers. Um, they also have opposite leaves, so the leaves grow out um, across from each other on the stems. And then, like many plants in Lamiaceae, all three of our plants today have square stems. Usually the first of our three little purple lamiums to start blooming in the spring, this is Lamium purpureum, also known as purple dead nettle. So one of the first things you're going to want to look at is the plant's habit. So purple dead nettle grows in upright clumps. One of the easiest ways to distinguish dead nettle from its relatives is the purplish or reddish coloring on its top leaves. These leaves do generally turn green after a while though, so you'll need to look at other characteristics too to really help you tell. Um, the leaves and the flowers of purple dead nettle are clumped densely towards the top of the stem. Um, so you can see how they're all really um, bunched together there, which is different from the other plants we're looking at today where they're more spread out. Um, notice too that the leaves are pointy at the tips, which is a pretty good distinguishing feature. The leaves farther down the stalk are a bit rounded and have long petioles, which is the leaf stem. Um, this part of the plant looks pretty similar to henbit and creeping charlie, so you want to make sure you're looking more at the top of the stems for the best identifying features. Our second bloomer is Lamium and Plexicoli, commonly known as henbit. So like purple dead nettle, henbit grows in upright clumps. Um, and as you can see, the tiers of flowers and leaves on henbit are more spaced out than they are in dead nettle. Um, and you can also easily see the flower buds, which are a dark pink, almost red. Um, the flower buds on purple dead nettle are usually pretty hidden in all those leaves. Um, one of the main identifying features that I look at, though, for henbit are the upper leaves. Um, and these leaves are very round, and the ones near the top are completely sessile, which means they clasp the main stem without any leaf stem. Usually the last of the three to start blooming, our final plant is Glaucoma heterosea, or Creeping Charlie or Ground Ivy. It's not in the Lamium genus like the other two, but it is still in the Lamiaceae family. One of the easiest ways to tell creeping charlie from dead nettle and henbit is that it creeps. It spreads by runners and the stalks are generally shorter than you see in the other two. They also don't have the distinct tiers of flowers and leaves that you see in henbit or purple dead nettle. The leaf shape is closer to henbit in that it is rounded, but they have longer petioles even towards the top of the stem. The flowers tend to be a little bit more purple, uh, while henbit and dead nettle tend to be a little bit more pink in the flowers. Plants in the Lamiaceae family often have fragrant leaves and stems, which is why so many of them are used as cooking herbs. Of the three we're looking at, though, Creeping Charlie is really the only one that has much of a scent at all. So if you spend any time weeding or mowing over it, you'll smell it. 
Um, I think it smells a little spicy, kind of like oregano, but it also smells a little rubbery like tires. So next time you see some, break some off and see if you can describe how it smells. So to review, here you've got a picture of all three of them right next to each other so you can see their different shapes and growth forms. And here are their different leaves and flowers and you can see how they come out from their stems. So I hope this helps you and gives you a little more confidence when you're in your yard and garden and happy weeding.